time to stop fine tuning llms fanatically i'm going to urge you to stop fine tuning llms without knowing why you are doing the fine tuning and i'm not going to just uh, throw it because i have a strong belief that fine tuning does not help llms in acquiring new knowledge i'm going to refer to a recent paper from google research actually says does fine tuning llms on new knowledge encourage hallucination even though the question of like the title of the paper is just a question the answer to the title is yes obviously and this paper does not only just say that it enhances hallucination but it also goes on further detail about explaining at what point you could stop your fine tuning to stop this particular problem from happening and we are going to look at this paper along with my general belief about what is happening with fine tuning to start with that this paper says that when you have large language models that are already aligned with sft supervised fine tuning encountering new information during a new fine tuning session might not be good for this model so the model when gets uh, trained first it has a pre training knowledge and then when the model is being fine tuned there is a new knowledge or an existing knowledge on which the model has been fine tuned a lot of people at least people who promote ai education has been promoting fine tuning as a means for the model to acquire new knowledge i mean i've also had uh, fine tuning tutorials on the channel but nowadays i started telling people that you don't need fine tuning to start with in the first place you need new knowledge maybe rag is what you should start with rather than fine tuning and you should go to fine tuning when you need more steerability more templated approach more style and this paper actually says that it is often conjectured that this can teach the model the behavior of hallucinating factually incorrect responses as the model is trained to generate facts that are not grounded in its pre-existing knowledge to close or uh, to to this end we designed a control setup focused on a closed book q and a where we vary the proportion of fine tuning examples that introduce new knowledge so they've got multiple levels of new knowledge that they say somehow they know well known and least well known and they actually show that the large language models struggle to acquire new factual knowledge uh, through fine tuning as the fine tuning examples that introduce new knowledge are learned significantly slower so during the training fine tuning process the new knowledge are learned significantly slower than the knowledge that already exists part of the pre training we also find that the examples with new knowledge are eventually learned they in linearly increase the model's tendency to hallucinate so let's say the model doesn't want to learn you are like oh no you have to learn i'm going to fine tune you i'm going to put new knowledge into you and if you do that it shows that the model's tendency to hallucinate actually increases linearly with the knowledge that you have put it supports the view that large language models mostly acquire factual knowledge through pre training whereas fine tuning teaches them how to use it efficiently this is this is a most important aspect like if you want to have one takeaway out of this entire video the takeaway is that large language models mostly acquire knowledge through pre training knowledge whatever the pre training knowledge has gone inside the model is what the model learns what the model remembers mostly and fine tuning helps the model use that knowledge efficiently rather than learning a new knowledge altogether and that is what this paper talks about this paper goes into a lot of different details we will start with one very important detail is if you see this chart like if you have seen any time there is a convergence chart like where people are trying to train fine tuning train or fine tuning models you would see something like this so you have got the training accuracy you have got the dev accuracy which is like what when people use it and as you can see here for the knowledge that is already part of the large language models pre training knowledge corpus as you can see the training you can see here the overfitting starts here uh, the overfitting starts what is overfitting if you are not familiar when the model performs extremely well with the small amount of knowledge that it has got possibly that it has learned the noise rather than the signal that means the null model is going to do extremely bad for out of distribution ood so when there is ood the model is going to do bad and uh, when it does bad while doing better with its own training data that is what we call as overfitting i mean there could be a lot of different definitions of overfitting this is my way of explaining overfitting in the context of large language models so as you can see the overfitting starts and uh, this is when the knowledge has been already known to the model 
but when the knowledge has not been known to the model you can see like a, a sudden a sudden increase in the training accuracy while there is a dip in the dev accuracy so the training and development accuracy is as a function of the fine tuning duration when fine tuning on 50% known and 50% unknown examples unknown examples are fitted substantially slower as you can see here the number of epochs it takes for you to train a known model and the number of epochs that you require to train an unknown like the known knowledge and unknown knowledge the unknown takes significantly longer time but even then we know that it results in hallucination and reduces the performance and uh, the model may encounter new factual information extending beyond its knowledge it acquired during pre-training but the problem is the kind of implications that it has so for that they have also introduced a new methodology they call it slick s l i c k and uh, they use the slick actually to demonstrate the slick stands for sampling based categorization of knowledge so basically they are categorizing knowledge into four categories uh, one is completely unknown i don't know unknown unknown the second one is it is known but it is weakly known the third one is a maybe known the fourth one is highly known and the way they come up with this categorization is greedy decoding always predicts the correct answer so whenever you do greedy decoding if you always have the correct answer this is highly known greedy decoding sometimes but not always predicts the correct answer sometimes but not always that is maybe known and then weekly known as greedy decoding never predicts the correct answer but whereas temperature sampling when you have like the temperature sampling with the temperature greater than zero sometimes predict the correct answer that is weakly known and then finally completely unknown it doesn't predict greedy answers never predict and also this also never predicts so these are the four categories that they've created as part of slick and they use slick to explain how these models are doing so one of the most important aspects uh, here is that learning from known examples is correlated with better use utilization of knowledge so if you have got known examples learning from known examples actually help the model in efficiently using its knowledge and also another important aspect is mitigating overfitting like how do you stop the model from hallucinating or reduce it so if you use early stopping which is a very popular machine learning technique to stop overfitting so whenever the model is not going to do better in the train uh, test data or validation data you stop the training then and there and that can minimize the risk of hallucinations caused by fitting the unknown examples since this behavior primarily emerges in the later training stages so this is another thing that you can see here so this green color line is the early stop and the red color one is the convergence when you let the model fully converge and uh, this is d is uh, when you have got like certain filters there where you take the unknowns out and what this actually tells us is that uh, the surprisingly for early stop the results of d for d are almost identical to the d known so when you train the model without any unknown or when you train the model with let's say known and unknown data but you do early stopping so in that case it is almost similar because the model starts learning the useless things only in the later stage of convergence and it is almost equivalent so one you have got the training data uh, sorry the fine tuning data with known and unknown the other one is you have only the known data and these two are almost like same when you have early stopping implemented for both known and unknown that is what the d is and uh, it indicating that unknown examples had a neutral effect on the performance since uh, as their rem removal had minimal impact conversely convergent result shows that with the longer training unknown examples are very very harmful and that is what we continuously see and this also shows one more important aspect for example if you see here this particular chart so we have like four categories unknown weakly known maybe known highly known and if you see here for a full convergence okay this is full convergence this is early stopping d unknown training the model with unknown data as a significant dip in its accuracy when you have full convergence and this once again says that if you do early stopping at least you are not making the model further worse if you ultimately if you wait to do fine tuning you cannot filter data so this is one thing that you need to keep in mind the other important aspect is uh, the maybe known uh, the group the cluster of maybe known plays a very important role so as you can see here highly known does not make that much difference weakly known does it but the maybe known fact the groups 
the data that is maybe known to the model or the pre-trained model plays a very important role in teaching the model to use the knowledge efficiently. So this also shows uh, that uh, maybe known examples are essential. So typically people would think that, okay, I'm going to go with only highly known to get the best result out of my fine tuning. But this analysis or this ablation, what they did actually shows that one unknown is bad. No doubt unknown is bad. Uh, if you cannot eliminate, un first of all, don't train on unknown. If you cannot eliminate unknown, then at least do early stopping. And you need maybe known as part of your fine tuning data for the model to efficiently use what it has learned as part of the pre training. And there are a lot more interesting studies here. You should definitely go check it out. But for me, the most important thing is, okay, the knowledge acquisition, if you want to teach a model, something new, factually new, completely new, maybe fine tuning is not the best way. Continued pre training you can go with, but if you cannot do continued pre training, maybe start with that. The second thing is, uh, if you, let's say, have to do fine tuning and you have like a lot of unknowns in it, early stopping might help you. And then finally, if you are going to do data filtering to train the model, do not always go with the best knowledge that is already available. Maybe known category based on what they've said. What is maybe known what they've said here? Maybe known as greedy decoding sometimes, uh, but not always predicts the correct answer. So something the model knows but does not able to use it perfectly efficiently all the time is always important for the model to perform better after the fine tuning has been finished. This paper uh, is quite interesting. I would strongly encourage you to read it. Let me know what you think about fine tuning, like based on your fine tuning experience or whether you have not chosen to fine tuning. See you in another video. Happy prompting.